All right, we're live on Facebook and Instagram. Good to see you. Happy Sunday night. Woo! Yeah, Sunday night, episode 124 coming up. David, good to see you. Denise, how good evening to you. Very cool. Both of you guys checking in, jumping in early. Very nice. So, hope uh, Susan's checking in from Hawaii. I'm so glad we moved you out there, Susan. That's very, uh, very fun. Sheila, hello, from Iowa. Priscilla is checking in over on Instagram. Good evening to you. Uh, let's see. I got a couple different shows here. That's the different one. I uh, see. Kaylin's here. Good evening to you. Uh, Gail from Illinois. Good evening. Lee, hello. Um, Ann, last night in South Haven, then the long drive back out west, right? Uh, Terry, good evening to you from Vero Beach. Um, Kat, checking in from Ohio. Oh, very cool. Lee, hey, hey, hey. Good to see Lee for sure. Hello, Linda. Good evening. Minnesota, LaDonna's checking in. Uh, Ellen's checking in from Miami. Hope you're well there. I haven't caught the news in a while. I hope Miami's doing well. I haven't, uh, just haven't really checked in to, you know, Houston and Miami and Florida and even Puerto Rico, so, and the Virgin Islands and all kinds of, I just haven't, uh, haven't been up to speed on that, but I probably should do that after I get off the show tonight, check in on everybody, but, uh, Virginia's checking in on Instagram, Karen's checking in, says hi, June, so Karen's saying hi to June, got it, uh, Rochelle checking in from Ohio, Suzanne from Illinois, Tammy, yay, uh, Stacy from California, very nice. Yeah, this is, because we do this at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, it ends up being 7 p.m. on the West Coast. So, get a lot of folks checking in from California, and um, Bunny's checking in from Austin. Uh, Tara's here. Johnstown, Pennsylvania's checking in. Kim's checking in from LA. Good evening to you, Kim. Uh, let's see, Nebraska's checking in. Daniela, good evening. Yeah, Jamie, happy Sunday is right. Yeah, it's Sunday. It's going by quick. Uh, Treva, checking in from North Carolina. Good evening. Uh, Carson City, Nevada. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Man, all kinds of places. I need, you know, we t I talk about this all the time. We need to put a map, like, not there, because we have a big, cool flag there. But we need to put a map somewhere and, like, put pins on it, you know. Um, you got to figure out how to do that. That's another project for another day. Uh, Tara, checking in from South Carolina. Yeah, Susan, this is my golf shirt. We're back to... You know, wearing wearing the golf shirt, so you know it's kind of. I'll talk about it during the show. I actually, um, it will come up. But this, I ordered this shirt when I made goal, way back when. Uh, San Antonio is checking out. I used to live in San Antonio. Very nice. Uh, Lee dropped three point four this week. Back to where you were a month ago. That maintenance is up and down. It's very nice. Down one hundred twenty six point four total. Very nice. Angie's checking in. Uh, Kathy, good evening to you. Margie from St. Pete. Let's see. Um, Alicia, no more early bedtime. Yeah. I, I, you know, I wish I could go to bed early. It just doesn't work. When I go to bed, I stay up for an hour in bed playing on my phone or something. So I need to stop that, apparently. Megan, checking in. Jeff, good evening to you. Kathy, yeah, it's October 1st, right? Very nice. Um, Ellen, yeah, great surprise. Um, yeah, so good. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you're doing well, even though obviously some challenges, so for sure. Um, Kim says she's down, made goal last week for a 53 total meltdown. <laughs> I like that term. You melted 53 pounds away. So congratulations on that. Let's put that in the show. Let's get that towards the end. So goal last week. Um, let me get, find it. I want to just make sure I got that. Um, yeah. All right, Kim. I got you. I'm gonna get you right at the very end. Say so Kim made goal last week. Melted fifty. Three pounds. Very cool. That'll be part of episode 124. Katie's checking in from Tallahassee. Denise is here. Jason, good evening, eh? Sorry. Jason's out of Canada. If you guys, again, if you haven't followed Jason, Jason's story is pretty amazing. 
as well. Uh, Jennifer at a trophy club, a trophy club, Texas. Uh, Kathy's checking in um, from Milwaukee. Yeah, David, I will. David says, plug the group, plug the group. Uh, I will share it during the podcast as well. But um, wise wingman or sorry, wisewingman.com. If you go to that website, wisewingman.com, it actually will launch you into a Facebook group um, of those who are in the show. So that's probably the place where during the show you can kind of keep up with each other and chat back and forth if you're not following, obviously, on the live video or after the show. Um, But, yeah, so wisewingman.com. You can certainly find it through Facebook as well, but I made it easier to find through there. So I will certainly plug that during the group. So thanks, David, for that reminder. Uh, But I have it written down as well. So very, very cool. Um, let's see. Um, ha, so Kim, so she did her, so that's interesting, right? So, so, um, Kim is, did her first stand up comedy show this week in Hollywood. And so I bet you for sure, right? So if you're a stand up comedian, um, you know, and you're down 53 pounds at goal, that's got to feel a lot different on stage. I can't even, I mean, I can kind of imagine, but I can't really imagine how cool that's probably feels. So. Congratulations. Um, so don't make fun of me when you're up there, though, right? And you met David Spade? That's pretty cool. Yeah, so if you if you work me into any of your show uh, and you make fun of me, I'm coming after you. So, very fun. Um, all right. Uh, Anne, good evening. Yeah, so I, I got you. Anne was here. So she, Anne says she loves the medium golf shirt. Right, me too. All right, let's scroll ahead. I'm going to kind of skip away, skip ahead a couple of you guys. Um, woo All right, now that now we're talking. Kim's now saying she'll plug the show um, to the podcast. So wiseadvice.com is the easiest, right? Because if you go to wiseadvice.com, you can see all of the previous shows. I've been on a kind of a, a URL buying spree lately. Got a lot of plans, got a lot of things going on. Um, wiseadvice.com will link you directly to the show fatdag.com you can get to the show by l- clicking on the listen now tab wisewingmen.com will get you to the Facebook group um, got a couple others that I'll share with you as time goes on but uh, kind of I really just so you know there's a lot going on up here um, so I got a lot uh, a lot to a lot to share uh, in the in the coming year so you know, it's not, none of it's all secretive. It's just I haven't really completely planned it. But I probably probably bought about a dozen URLs uh, this week. So right now they all point to the same place. So that's kind of fun. Um, Kim, I would so appreciate that. That is very cool. Very, very cool. All right. Well, let's do um, well, episode 124. Before we do that, let's get a couple things written into... The Book of Awesome, right? Isn't that what we called it last time? Um, how did I lose my pen? Dang it. Will you guys be alright if I go get a pen? I gotta go find it. I like my, it's the only pen I like to write in this book with, so I, it's, I have this pen, but, um, Stacy, I'll answer that when I come back. Hang on. This is a special pen. So Stacy is asking, do you ha- do I have another show planned? Uh, I don't have another show per se planned. Uh, I mean, another. I have more episodes of this show for sure, uh, but an actual another standalone show. I have some ideas that I'm kicking around, but um, as of right now, nothing is planned. No, no. All right, let's get this a uh, couple things here first. So um, let's get Kim written in. Kim was on stage with David Spade. Down 53 pounds. Good 
Good job. Let's see. That's October 1st. There you are, Kim. You and David Spade are echoed, written into the book of awesome. So, very, very fun. I bet you David Spade never thought he would be written into a Weight Watchers book of awesome. Um, Jason ran a, a, a half marathon in under two hours. I did see that. That's, that's amazing, too. That's a nine-minute pace to do a two a, a half marathon in nine. Uh, I'm sorry, in less than two hours is a nine-minute pace, which is, which is that's that's booking for 13 miles. Um. So this is the that's good. I'm gonna get this one in here. So Debbie ran your fourth run. And fourth run, four miles and 33 minutes. That's a pretty good pace too. Very nice. Uh, so Debbie, I'm, I probably won't see your response, but I'm trying to. But um, your fourth run, it's like the fourth time you've ever ran recently or... Just out of curiosity, um, Brenda, good evening to you. Ah, Susan ordered a Project Lift t-shirt from Weight Watchers, and it's a medium, and it fits. That's so much fun. You know what? That's the coolest thing. Like, when you can just buy things online, and you just choose the size that you want, and it just comes in, and it fits. Pretty amazing, so. Um, Lisa is down 26 pounds, made it into the gold jeans of a size 12. Yeah, it makes her as happy as a medium golf shirt makes me. So I know exactly what that feels like for sure. Um, yeah, I think Lee, it was it, uh, Lee sent me that. So Lee met Charlotte through the show. Um, so that was pretty cool. So Lee and Charlotte met in this chat room that you guys are chatting in right now. Lee and Charlotte met each other there. They found out they lived close enough to each other and they went and had lunch together. All because of the show. So now there's an accountability team that we've built together inside here, and I think that's just absolutely amazing. So let's let's end on that. Not end, but let's start the show on that one. And eventually it'll be on the episode because it's in my inbox. So, um, so yeah, so Lee and Charlotte met uh, in the group. Now they're friends in real life. Accountability is what I'm putting. Hashtag accountability buddies. Very cool. Look at that. So Lee is there, Debbie's there, and Kim is there. After the show, we'll add a couple more. Um, there we go. Isn't that the coolest thing, though, right? Uh, is we just, you know, before we, before any of us were doing this, we we're just kind of on our own, just kind of trying to figure it out. You know, of course, we had the meeting room, and I'm going to talk about that, too, during the show, the meeting room, how important that is, but, um, but this is different, I think. So let's tie up the Book of Awesome. There we go. I'm going to skip ahead on the Facebook, so I'm going to miss a lot of comments. Apologize. But we have a show to do. So the people are shrinking. All right, episode 124. Uh, let's get a mic check in. Gotta get a microphone. Testing one, two, testing one, two, three. Yeah, it looks good.
Cheers. <sighs> you like this, Kim? This is uh it is official. I mean, we're, we have a million downloads. You can't just do that with a with internal microphone on the iPad, right? So, all right. Here we go. Episode 124. There we go. Oh, so this is from Ikea. Um, so we have, obviously... I drink a lot of water, but I just refill. I'm not paying for bottled water. I do on if I have to, but so we refill our bottles out of the fridge. I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember... When you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. That's right. Here we are, episode 124 of Wise Advice, and we are just rocking through it. And I want to open the show with my new favorite term, uh, and I'm going to pronounce it for you a couple times. Why oops up? Why oops up? So it's kind of like a sneeze, right? And it's kind of like an involuntary cough, and it's YUPSEP. And so the the term is, it's an acronym, and so it's when you're at a point, stop eating points, YUPSEP. And so what I want you to do is I want you to think of that in your own head, and and as you reach for that last potato chip or another cookie, you go, uh, YUPSEP, kind of like a sneeze. And the common response at that point is you say, I wish you good focus. So if you see a wingman out there that needs some help, and you can just simply say, why oopsep? And they will respond, I wish you good focus. And that's kind of our greeting that we can help each other with and keep us going back and forth so that we know that we're in the journey together, that we're not alone, that we're better together, and that we're getting it done. Now, I believe this term is vital to the process that we're doing because we have to keep everything under control. And I get people that ask me on occasion, well, when you say when you're out of points, what does that mean? Does it mean your dailies? Does it mean your weeklies? Does it mean your activity points? And my response to you is it means whatever point budget you're working with that you've figured out that works for you for that day, that's the point budget you. So if you're eating your weeklies, then you use your weeklies. If you're eating your fit points, then you use your fit points. Whatever it is that you've figured out that's working for you, that's where you stop. So why oops up? Right? That's the term you got to remember. Use the hashtag, spread it like wildfire, and when you see it on the web, when you see it anywhere, when someone uses hashtag YOOPSEP, it's probably the proper response is to reply with, I wish you good focus. So here we are. Thanks again to a lot of you folks. Uh, you found the show, of course. You found it on the web. You've been to fatdag.com. You click on the Listen Now tab, uh, and you become a patron. You've joined the small community that we interact with inside there uh, by just providing some sort of financial support to the show. You can do it for as little as, as a dollar a month. Certainly, you don't have to, but for those of you who want to, uh, I really do appreciate that. That allows me to continue to keep the show commercial-free, advertising-free, as we roll through. So go to fatdag.com, click on Listen Now. You'll see that tab uh, to go ahead and sign up for that. But I want to open the show up with Carol. Carol writes in and says, This is my first time with Weight Watchers, and I'm loving it. I was always resistant because I can count calories on my own, but Weight Watchers is so much more. I am very grateful for finding your podcast, your Facebook page, your email, etc., 
I'm on the verge of 25 pounds lost since I joined at the end of July. My next goal after that is 10%. Yes, my journey will be long, but it isn't life, but isn't life one big journey? Well, that's no problem then, right? Anyway, I'm writing because I've seen photos of you at your goal weight and now a little over goal, but more muscular. I have made an attendance goal for working out now, but I have some resistance bands that I would like to use, but I am slightly afraid that I will build muscle, but not lose weight. What are your thoughts on weights while losing weight? Did you do any weight tra training while you were losing? Thanks for your service and for your inspiration. I appreciate it. I wish you good focus, Carol. Carol, great job on uh, on joining, finding the support that you need, joining Weight Watchers. It, you're right. When you say you love it, uh, man, I completely agree. It's the number one thing that changed my life. It taught me how to eat properly. It taught me how to balance my life. The community that we've built together through the Weight Watcher community is really what transformed my mind and it enabled me and, and and inspired me to start this group, start the podcast, start the Facebook pages, all so that we could continue to connect. Just like you, I can count calories, but what I've figured out too, or sorry, what Weight Watchers has figured out is that calorie counting um, doesn't really help if you're eating the wrong kinds of foods. Not all calories are created equal. A 100-calorie apple is not the same thing to your body as a 100-calorie cookie. So if you're strictly counting calories, you, your brain never really makes the transition to choosing healthier foods because you can get away with eating the 100-calorie cookie all day long and still staying within the plan. As we transition to a healthier diet and a healthier mindset, that is the beautiful piece that Weight Watchers has put together that enabled me to finally break my sugar addiction and get myself to goal. Clearly, it's working for you. You're down 25 pounds since July. That does not happen by accident. 25 pounds is significant work. You don't just instantly wake up one morning and find out you're down 25 pounds. You had to take a daily mindset you had to take a daily focus. You had to get educated daily on what you're doing to your body to get to a deliberate effort of losing 25 pounds. So if you've lost any amount of weight following this plan, know that you've done it intentionally and you've done it as a result of your continued focus, your dedication, and your effort is what's getting it done. Now, when you've, you've set your attendance goal for working out, which is fantastic, I recommend that all the time. I, you know, I want us to go to the gym. I want us to work out more. I want us to get more activity than we had previously. I don't want us to go so crazy that we end up getting sore and having to take a month off. It does us no good to do that Navy SEAL kickboxing cardio boot camp class and go out and burn 600, 700 calories and then take a year off because we're so sore. So that attendance goal is what you're working on to get you done. Now, as you now start wanting to do some weight training, uh, and the concern is building muscle, and, and you're afraid to lose weight. Now, I tell you, um, I think building muscle is a key component to this journey. And here's why. As you build muscle mass, your body will burn more calories. A muscular body needs more calorie, more fuel to propel itself throughout the course of the day. So building muscle has a, has a benefit to it where you're now, your calorie intake, if you stayed in the same range, uh, your calorie intake is now being more used better to kind of fuel your weight loss efforts because your body is needing more fuel to survive. As we've heard before, you know, a pound of muscle equals the same as a pound of fat. A pound for pound, they are the same. You put them both on the scale, they both weigh a pound. The difference, however, is a pound of muscle will take up about a quarter of the space that that same pound of fat will take up. So if you change, if, you, if your scale stays the same, if you add muscle to your body but you're losing fat, you can reduce yourself in size and the scale can stay the exact same. Or as you're referring to in my photos, is I'm up about 10 pounds from my goal weight. But if you're watching the live feed, you'll see a t-shirt that I'm wearing right now that I bought when I hit goal. So when I hit goal, I was very happy. I, everything I was buying was mediums. 
So I bought this medium t-shirt. I bought it online. I was excited to get it. It came in. I was 178 pounds. I was in a size medium for most things. The shirt came in. I took it out of the bag. I put it on. It was too tight. I couldn't get it over my stomach. My stomach was still sticking out just a little bit on the sides. And so there was no way that I would wear this shirt in public. I continued doing my strength training. I continued following the plan. And now the shirt, the same shirt that I had a year ago, I'm up about 11 pounds and the shirt fits really good. As a matter of fact, I wore it all day today and I'm wearing it to the podcast uh, because it fits good now. So the whole point of exercise is that you want to get your body into a much better place. You don't necessarily work out to add muscle. You don't necessarily work out to become more fit, even though those are absolutely huge benefits to what we're doing. The reason you work out, the number one reason I want you to do some sort of activity is because when you work out, your brain suddenly kicks in gear and says, I'm an athlete. I'm a fitness person. I'm doing something deliberate to make myself healthy. So you work out mostly for your brain and your mindset. And when I told you early on in this journey, I went to the gym most every single morning in January, most every single morning in February, all I did was walk on the treadmill. And I just kept that mindset going that, you know what, I'm just doing this. It's what I do. I'm, I'm training myself to be a better athlete, to be in better shape. And slowly that mindset kicks into gear. And, and sure, the intensity will eventually pick up. But at that point in my journey, I was simply working out to fuel the healthier habits and to get my mind in the right shape to say, this is what we do now. In my specific instance, so my strength training piece, what I did, I love the strength training. The, the gym that I go to for my strength training, it, I really, really enjoy it. I knew early on that I needed that motivation. So I stopped, for me, I stopped doing the strength training and I set myself a goal of 200 pounds. I said, when I get to 200, I will reward myself by going back to the gym and do strength training. Looking back, I wish I didn't do that. I wish I would have stayed with the program the entire time because now I'm sure I would, you know, the, the muscle that I'm still trying to develop now would probably already be more developed had I stayed with it. So I would absolutely encourage you to add in some strength training. I would encourage you to add in a little bit of fitness more than you're doing now and en enjoy it. You absolutely can get this done. Carol, you're down 25 pounds. That's amazing work. Keep it up. Crystal writes in and says, Hi, Mike. I am so bummed I was not available to see your 100th episode live. I listened this morning and I had tears. You truly are an inspiration to so many, including myself. I know you are a leader and tomorrow I'm attending my first meeting. I have been on Weight Watchers this time since January 29, 2017, but I've been online only. I don't know if you remember me from the live chat, but my mom has stage four cancer and my weekends are spent two hours from home helping my parents as much as I can. With that being said, I work full time. I do my best at taking care of my own home, exercise, meal planning, etc. One of your shows reminded me how important support is. Well, I found a meeting close to home on Saturday mornings. I can leave the meeting and head straight to my mom's. I'm not sure why, but I am really nervous. Any advice you can offer would be greatly appreciated. I've been told if I don't feel as though it's a good fit, I can find another, but I don't have many options. I just know that I am determined to hit goal for once in my life and join Team Lifetime. I first went to a Weight Watchers meeting at age 12. At age 45 now, I am sure a ton has changed. Any tips, advice, suggestions that you can give me are greatly appreciated. Thanks for being my wingman and for helping me stay focused. Crystal. Well, Crystal, uh, yeah, I remember from the live chat. And, uh, you know, my heart goes out to your, to your family and to your mom. Um, you know, we, obviously we continue to hope that the best for you and for her uh, I can't even imagine what it is that you're going through. This is exactly where the term do your best does come up. And so your best is going to change every single scenario is different. Every day is different. Your best today may not be the same as your best was yesterday. 
but you wake up every morning focused, you put you as a priority on your to-do list, you take care of you, and in and amongst all of the other things that you're doing, you absolutely have to make sure that you take care of you. So continue uh, to find what's working for you, and I believe that the support that you get from a meeting is incredibly valuable. Now, I've been on Connect for a while. Obviously, you're right. I'm a, I'm a Weight Watcher leader, you know, as you know. Uh, but I tell you what I, what I know about the program from my viewpoint. And what I know about the program from my viewpoint is, is just you can do this online. But the meeting adds a component that you just can't replicate. That human element sitting next to somebody, seeing the, the body language of somebody else sitting in a meeting room. And, and working together as that team is what really makes the meeting room different. You know, and I understand the nerves heading into your very first meeting. I can see it every time I talk to someone who's joined for the first time, you know, a lot of the same things pop up. And they say, you know, I, I didn't want to come here. I'm nervous. I weigh more now than I ever did. This is the most I've ever weighed in my life. I didn't know if I would like the meeting. All of that stuff pops in. And what I can tell you is you do have the ability to find another meeting. Now, I'm very fortunate in my area, my specific meeting room, we have 13 meetings a week in the same room. I understand that not all of the country has that opportunity. So if you, have, if you live in an area where, where your meetings are limited, here's what I would offer for you. You know, the meetings may not always be a good fit for you. But think of this. They may be a good fit for somebody else. Your journey, your inspiration, everything that you're going through, and the fact that you're carrying on, there may be someone sitting in that meeting room that needs to hear your story. So as you participate in the meeting, you're not just participating for your benefit, you're participating for the benefit of the entire group. And as I also continue to always say is that the meeting room is that special sacred place, and it takes a while to build that rapport. You can't walk into your very first meeting. Usually the meetings are well established. You know, I understand the nerves of you walking into an established meeting. I can promise you that the group is going to be supportive. They're going to welcome you in with open arms, but it takes a while to get the groove on. It takes a while to understand everybody in the room and to build that trust and the rapport. But once you build it, the, the meeting room is invaluable to the journey. I get asked a lot of times, of course, you know, as I lead the meetings here in Indianapolis, I get asked often, people say, hey, Mike, I want to come to one of your meetings. You know, and certainly you're more than welcome to come to a meeting, but, but I can tell you it's probably a little disappointing. It's disappointing in the sense where my meeting room is the folks in the room are all working together. They're having amazing results. The things they're able to do completely blow my mind. I am more proud of them than you will ever know. Handing out the charms left and right to these people, it just is incredibly rewarding. And they see it in each other, and they're rewarded by each other, and they're motivated by each other. Every day, someone calls out another member and says, because of you, I was able to do this. They're inspiring each other in that room. If you pop in, you may miss out on some of that because you're not connected to the group. So you're more than welcome to attend my meeting, but I would say I want you to attend for more than one time. I want you to go forever and ever and ever so we build that rapport. So as you jump into your meeting, I want you to jump in with both feet. I want you to be there to support everybody who's in that room for you, and you will find that the meeting will be a good fit at some point for you. A lot has changed. We want you to join us. You absolutely can do it. Thanks you for your email. Chastity writes in and says, Hi, my name is Chastity. I've been in Weight Watchers for over a year. I have lost about 30 pounds and I seem to have stalled. I have zero motivation. I mean none. I have no idea how to get it back or where to even start. I have been blessed to have an amazing brother who is paying for me to do Weight Watchers and I feel like I'm just letting him down and wasting his money. I saw, I saw a video of, of myself on a boat this weekend, and there is nothing about it that I liked. I want to like what I see when there is a photo or a video of me. I have four kids and tons of pictures of them, 
and almost none of me. I struggle with eating healthy on a budget. Remember that I have four kids and I'm not a fan of tracking. How do you get your motivation back when it's just gone? Chastity. Well, first of all, congratulations on losing 30 pounds. As you heard in the beginning of the show, you don't lose 30 pounds by accident. Whatever you're doing clearly is working. You've, it's taken you a year to do that, which is perfectly right on track. That's great work. You're, you're well within the guideline of the program, which means you, I can tell that you're consistently putting in the effort to get the results. I understand that you stalled. You have zero motivation. You hit that complacency trap that we talked about. Down 30 pounds is so significant that you start feeling better and everything about you changes. And then you kind of get to that point where you're like, yeah, I, I got this. You know, you have to understand that it didn't happen by accident. You can continue to get this done. Your brother is an amazing guy. The fact that he's paying for it for you, what a great guy he is. Honor him. Get to Lifetime so that you can give him his money back. And you can continue using the benefits of the program without having to pay. Getting to goal, getting to lifetime is exactly how you reward him. Now, when you talk about seeing a video of yourself, I understand exactly that feeling. There was a point in my journey where I absolutely, I had to approve every photo that was taken of me before it would be posted. I, I, I deliberately set my Facebook up so that people could not tag me in photos because I didn't want to see them. And so what happened is, is I had to get to a point where I had to finally say, you know what, this is what I look like. I had to accept that. When I finally accepted that, it then allowed me to say, okay, this is what I look like. But I don't like it, but I want to change. But I'm going to love myself now so that I have the ability and the strength to go get it changed. And I did that. Now, the biggest part of this program is the tracking piece. You absolutely have to track. I completely understand, again, when you say you're not a fan of tracking. I'm not a fan of going to work. I'm not a fan of doing laundry. I'm not a fan of doing the dishes. I'm not a fan of taking the garbage out. I actually, I hate washing my car. All those chores in life give me some, some really great rewards when I get them done. And so what you have to do is you have to become a fan of, of you and whether you're a fan of tracking or not becomes irrelevant because you're a chastity fan you're your number one fan you're your number one cheerleader and everything you're working towards is to propel the life that you want the photos and the videos that you want to see of yourself exist they're out there they're out there just waiting for you to take them and when you become a fan of you you start making progress down that path, and that will lead you to goal. you got to remember why you did this. With four kids, and you have tons of pictures of them, at some point, I want you to love the photos that you're in now because you're going to want them. Continue working the program. You clearly have proven you know how to do this. You can get it done. You've lost 30 pounds. It didn't happen by accident. So as you focus now, and you continue to go forward, 30 turns into 31, to 41, to 51, and the goal that you set for yourself is absolutely possible. It's all possible by you becoming a fan of you and a fan of tracking. Go get it done. You absolutely can do it. Uh, Mary writes in and says, Hi, Mike. I just received this really sweet update email from you. What a great idea. And a moting vote of and a motivating one at that. I was there on Connect when you put out your very first post. Yes, we have been together since then. My Connect name is Buckeye Mimi One. I joined January 2nd, 2016. I started at 299 pounds. Currently, I'm at 251. I love the program. I used to be a total couch potato, only getting off the couch to find more food or to use the bathroom. Hubs and I are empty nesters. Both the sons are grown, successful adults living out of state. I joined Weight Watchers at the urging of my doctor, who told me I was slowly killing myself with food. I walked into the meeting room on January 2nd, 2016, feeling embarrassed and ashamed. 
but I had a secret agenda. I really didn't want this to work, but it did. Who knew? Who knew I could lose this weight that I had been secretly hoping to not lose? I was actually unsure of myself looking back. Who would I become? My weight is almost as strong-willed as I am. It's coming off, but oh so slow. My sizes are down from a size 22 to a 16. I'm very, very happy about that, but it will continue to keep coming off. I know this. Let me tell you who I am now. I eat amazing, delicious food daily. I follow the program. I get my blue dots most days. I work out. I do yoga. I lift weights. Minimum of 10,000 steps daily. I have inspired my hubs to join me also on this journey. By the way, I didn't nag. I didn't even ask. He just watched me and jumped on board. Then, a funny thing. When the out-of-state sons noticed that mom was getting thinner, they started eating healthy also. The trickle-down effect is something I wasn't planning on my first day in the green chair in the meeting room. I have a, I've had a ton of crazy stuff going on. My son's wedding, vacation weekends, family reunions, but I walk with you daily using your podcast. I know that I will continue on this journey for the rest of my life. I will never go back to the person that I was before. My weekends are now filled with bike rides, kayaking, long walks with the hubs. In the evening after work, we both work out at the gym. Maybe it's just a short swim or lifting weights, but this is our new lifestyle, and let me tell you how great we looked at the son's wedding. Uh, yes, knowing your why and continually working the program, and we're tweaking it. We are going on a cruise in December, and I seriously can't wait. I hope this helps somebody. We are all in this together. Thank you for your service to our great country and for this wonderful, well-done podcast that so many people are using as another tool for success in their journey. Much gratitude and respect, a friend in Ohio, Mary. Well, thank you for being there since day one. Um, as you remember, man, that first post that I put out, that was a point in my journey where I didn't know where else to turn. I didn't feel like I had the support team. I didn't know if I did or not. And so I took that step and I put that first post out there. Uh, and many of you responded with an overwhelming show of support. Uh, and that was the beginning of propelling me to goal. So I know the absolute value of the support. Uh, sitting in that green chair in the meeting room, just like you, you know, you know, all the chairs end up being green, which is just kind of that, that neat color. And it just kind of reframes your mind and says we're doing something different. Um, we sit in those chairs. And so as your doctor urged you to go do that, man, I love your doctor. I love the fact that your doctor uh, took his oath seriously and said to you, you know, you're killing yourself slowly with food. Boy, if that doesn't resonate with you, if that doesn't tell you that, you know, basically you're borrowing from your life expectancy to cover the bad habits of today. And so that's not what we want to do. We want to live a long, healthy, fulfilling life. And you're doing that now. The difference in the beginning of your journey from the couch potato to all the amazing things that you're doing, you clearly have proven that you are the prize in this journey. I, I hear that so often from so many people that, that once they start having success in, on the program, that somebody in their circle continues or sees that success and wants to be a part of it. And so as you work out, as you do yoga, as you start eating healthy, people can't help but see how awesome you look, how awesome you feel, and how much fun you're having, and they want a part of it. So way to set the attendance goals, way to continue getting it done. I'm, I'm very honored to walk this journey with you and that we're walking it together. You know, continually working the program and tweaking it is absolutely the key. The way you start the program is not the way you're going to continue to work the program. You always have to ask yourself, do I like the results that I'm getting? If I do, I keep going. If for some reason I'm not happy with the results, then at that point I have to mix it up. But you think about this. You're going on a cruise in December, and, and your, your words say, I seriously can't wait. 
I know many times that we see a lot of people, they, they have the luxury of going on a vacation, but they dread it because they know they got to go find some clothes that fit. They know they're going to be photos. They know there's going to be a lot of walking. And you're going on a vacation and you're not dreading it. You actually can't wait. What an amazing lifestyle change that is. Thank you for being a wingman. I've created a group of, of folks too. Uh, wisewingmen.com is a Facebook group that now is you know free to join. If you're on Facebook, go to wisewingmen.com. It'll direct you back into Facebook. But that'll give you that tool to give you that success on the journey. We need every tool that we can find to get there. I believe Connect is that, that one tool that absolutely is the most powerful of all. But I also know that at some point you need just a little bit more. So your first line of defense is your, your Weight Watcher team, your Connect team, your meetings. And then beyond that, you just continue to seek out other folks. And that's why we've created the podcast and I've created the wisewingmen.com all so that we all can reach our goals and go in the right direction. Jenny writes in out of New York, says, Hi, Fat Dag. I have written to you several times in the past. I always appreciate your advice as it is very helpful to me. So I bring to you a new question today. Do you feel that it is possible to be too good on the plan to the point where by the time you get to goal, you just crash and burn and run back to all the foods that you've missed while losing? Allow me to explain what I'm getting at. Every day I allow myself some small indulgence, whether it be a few Hershey's Kisses or a few potato chips, just something little that helps me feel like I am not deprived. I eat these, I eat these things in proper serving sizes and it works well. However, I do not really have any big indulgences too often and I'm wondering if you think that may actually backfire on me down the line. I think I still view some few foods as off limits because of high point values, and I'm wondering if this is counterproductive to the whole concept of learning how to fit things into the plan. Today, I had a 16-point bakery item for the first time in 10 months since I've been on the plan. I'm down 101 pounds so far, so I must be doing something right, but I also want to make sure I'm not setting myself up for failure in the future. I really do want this to be a sustainable lifestyle for me. Is indulging in point heavy treats only once or twice in almost a year to seldom? I really am interested in your opinion on this as I'm really starting to overthink my current strategies for long term success. Thank you so much for your time and keep up the awesome work. Jenny out of New York. Um, Jenny, 101 pounds is the part that of all the, everything you wrote in, I saw that you're 101 one pounds down. So whatever you're doing clearly is working for you. Keep up the amazing work because you're absolutely getting it done. So here's what said you, this is a sustainable lifestyle. You, you, what you've done, you know, to lose 101 pounds, you had many weekends, many, you know, months have had to gone by. You didn't do this overnight, so you're able to kind of work in your life and, and kind of just figure out what that current balance is. Don't overthink it. Continue to do what you know to be successful. You know, now as far as, you know, can you, can you work the plan too good? I don't know if that's possible. I think you can work the plan. You can enjoy, you know, a small treat here and there. Where I would caution you is that understanding the difference between enjoying a treat and satisfying a habit. If you're eating to satisfy a habit, then I would, I would encourage you at that point to look at that and maybe make the change. But if it's something you really want, then go have it, enjoy it, track it, move on. I've found along my journey, though, there are, I can have higher, uh, sorry, lower point foods that are better for me than some of the higher point snacks that I've had a lot, all the time. You know, but the other thing that I want to say is that there's a lot of times on this journey, there are things that you're going to have to give up and you're going to have to give up parts of the things. And, and you hear people all this time say, don't do anything to lose the weight that you're not willing to do for life. But I'm telling you now that, that there will come a time 
where there are things that you're going to give up. And let me give you an example of what I mean by that. I gave up the auto response. I gave up the habit of eating bad. I gave up Pizza Friday. I gave up Taco Tuesday. I gave up Wing Wednesday. I gave up popcorn at the movies. And I gave up the, the auto response of yes to would you like fries with that. Now, I'm not saying I gave up pizza. I didn't give up tacos. I didn't give up popcorn. I gave up the auto response that was the habit that was forcing me to have pizza every Friday simply because it was Friday. I gave up the habit that said, well, every Wednesday wings are half price, so we go get wings because they're half price. I gave up those auto responses and made deliberate choices. So now when I work those indulgences back into my plan, it's because I want it. It's because it's been a while since I've had it. And it's because I plan for it and I've made an accountability way to have it into my plan. If you follow me along on Connect, if you've seen there, you'll know that's exactly what happened to me this weekend. I overate. I overate on, on Sunday evening. I had pizza. I had ice cream because I purposely wanted it. There's, to me, there's a complete difference between overeating and binging and struggling. I did not find this as a struggle in my journey. I, I'm actually I'm in a great place mentally. I didn't find out that I, I didn't think that I was binging. I knew exactly what I was doing, and I knew for sure I'd wake up the next day and be completely fine, which is what I did. But sure, there's a point of life where the amount of points given for the day to maintain my weight loss did not fit into the social calendar that I had planned. Now, if I'm going to plan that consistently then yes, I need to work it in. If a habit is driving those decisions, then yes, I need to make the adjustment. But I need to give up the bad habits, not the bad foods, and continue working it. You absolutely can get this done. 101 pounds is proving that. Keep up the amazing work. Before the show started, we're hanging out on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, Kim wrote in to let me know that she's down, or sorry, she hit her goal weight, and she melted away 53 pounds. She's a stand-up comedian out of the West Coast in California, standing on stage with David Spade at her goal weight. Melted 53 pounds. The amazing feeling that that brings is a feeling that we're all after. When you can stand up in front of a crowd and the last thing on your mind is your physical appearance because you don't feel like you're overweight, then you absolutely know you've had the success. That's a feeling you're never, ever going to want to give up. As you recognize that, as you write it down, as you celebrate the fact that you've hit goal, Kim, I'm very proud of you. Keep up the amazing work. Way to be the prize. Way to inspire others and keep in the world full of laughter. That's what it's all about, and that is why we celebrate. What is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com. Click on Listen Now. Send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. You can email me at onair at fatdag.com. I want you to email in your celebrations because I want you to be proud of what you're doing. When you become proud of what you're doing, you can become de uh, deliberate in all of your actions. And that deliberate focus will get you to whatever goal you want to get done. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goals and go after it. I wish you good focus. Whoop, whoop. So, Kim, if you get David Spade to listen to that, then we're, we're golden, right? That's so funny. Very, 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 very cool. Um, so, fun. Did you guys understand um, the piece of that that I was talking about is, it, you know, it's not about the food. It's about the bad habits that force you to continue eating the wrong food. So, there's not, um, you know, there, there's no food that's off limit it's the bad habits that are off limits you know and so pizza friday is just you know you don't need pizza every single friday you know i'm sure there's someone out there who's having pizza every single friday and they're doing great that's fine 
But but understand that if you're eating pizza simply because it's Friday, then that's probably not the right response. So um, very, very, very cool. So yeah, 124 in the books. So, um, and so Jennifer, let's, let's address that. So Jennifer said, I'm, I agree you're giving up your daily desserts. So I agree with you. If it's a daily dessert, give it up. Not the actual what the dessert is, but the fact that you're doing it daily. So bring it back when you want it on occasion. But if you're doing it daily just because the day says that we're having it, then that's where I want you to t- kind of, you know, reframe. So, um, Daniela, thank you for recognizing that as well. Um, yeah, Kathy. So Kathy, I appreciate that. So just last heads up. So um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, I have people coming in from uh, all over the country coming in for a golf event. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, for sure, not at all going to happen. Uh, Saturday, I'm probably going to sleep. Uh, and then Sunday, I have um, Weight Watchers meeting all day Sunday. So maybe Sunday night if we don't do something Monday or Tuesday of this week. And as you know, Tuesday is my hardest night because I do a meeting on Tuesday night. So there may be a show tomorrow night. After that, it's probably going to be a week. Then the calendar is back to empty. We're back to normal. And then we're back into the daily schedule. So uh, this time of year, the fundraising stuff we do gets really heavy this time of year. Um, so that is the, the piece. That's, that's why I'm here tonight because I just know that if I didn't do it tonight, it's probably going to be about a week before we get back to it. So just giving you that heads up. Um, but that is just, it's just this time of year. Uh, and, and so, uh, it's, you know, October you know, and plus for all my work work, it's the end of our fiscal year. So lots going on this particular week, but it all ends in five days. So stick with me. Um, let's see. Yeah. So Kristen, obviously it'll be posted on YouTube for those of you on Instagram who are not following it on Facebook. Uh, the live video gets posted on YouTube and the beautiful thing about the YouTube video is Instagram. The flag in the background is backwards, uh, on Facebook and YouTube, the flag is orientated correctly. So so if you catch it on Facebook or YouTube, the flag looks great. If you catch it on Instagram, it looks a little backwards. So you can catch it wherever it is, uh, but Facebook, YouTube, or you can rewatch it on Instagram for sure. Or of course, it'll be the audio only will be in the um, uh, in the app in about an hour. So, so Chrissy, that's a, so Chrissy makes a good point here. She says she honestly enjoys my food now that it's not a habit. That is so true. So the things that, you know, I'm, the things that I eat aren't much different than what I used to eat before. The quantity and the frequency and the, the reason why I'm eating it is different. But you're right. When I order something now that I haven't had in a while and I take that bite, it is fantastic because I'm not having it every day. So for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, so over on Instagram, uh, Hope17 says, uh, encouraging Hope says, thanks for the info about the meetings. You're afraid to start going to a meeting because of being afraid how it will be. You know, I'm telling you, if you came to my meeting, you'd, you'd, you'd walk into a big, great big hug. So um, find a meeting that works for you. It absolutely is that they're out there. So um, very, very cool. Now, uh, Instagram folks, um, you got a minute 17 before Instagram cuts out on me and then we're going to end over on Facebook. So, um, why oops up to you for sure. And, uh, but so we got a minute left on Instagram. Thank you folks for being on Instagram. We're going to end this over on Facebook in probably a few minutes and, um, very, very, very fun. So thank you for being here. Continue to tune in and episode 124 will be on the servers tonight. And then we'll see you in about a week live again. So very, very, very cool. So thank you for that. Maybe we'll do, maybe on Friday afternoon, Eastern time, I'll do a live show from the golf course because I know we're doing some radio interviews and some radio shows. Maybe during one of our radio shows, um, I'll pull up Facebook uh, and do a live show from our radio show, let you watch our radio broadcast live. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, can't guarantee it, but that's the, that we'll try that on Friday afternoon. So, or Friday morning it will be so cool, cool, cool. So, all right, Instagram to 10 seconds and you're out of here. Thank you.
Um, Charlotte over on Facebook says you sign up for the $13 a month patron to thank you. And they spelled Arkansas wrong? No, they did not. I will email those folks. That's so funny. Um, and isn't that true, right? It's all about habits versus, you know, versus the choices. So think about the things that we do, the, you know, the habits that we're doing. They're bad. So we can get there. Yep. So Jennifer, yeah, you're, if you're tracking it as a habit, so that, it, you know, it's so hard to do. Recognize the difference between, you know, am I doing this because it's a habit or am I doing it because I really want it? So make that, make the right choice for sure. Um, Brian, we're on the big screen. Are you using Apple TV, Brian? Is that how you're streaming it? I know Kirby does that. Um, let's see. So, Lynn, yep, first live show. You are very much a part of it. Very cool. Thanks for writing in, for sure. Uh, Lee, Lee, you and I agree on that, right? Uh, Lee says his daily dessert very much by choice is an apple. So, uh, me, usually an apple uh, or banana or strawberries is my dessert. And you know I like my strawberries. So, um, apple a day keeps the doctor away. Um... Yep, Ellen. So Ellen is still doing Halo Top uh, chocolate chip and Cool Whip, working into your dailies. Yep, I get it. You know, if it's working for you and you like it, continue doing it. So, um, you know, I will caution you if if you're having it daily because you're having it daily, then that I would just caution you to just rethink if it needs to be daily. Um, you can still absolutely have it, but does it need to be daily? If it does, then continue doing it. That's, that's your choice. You get to make the pick. Um. So Angela, no, so it's the same thing, Angela. So I, I'm, I'm never, ever going to tell you what to eat. I'm going to tell you why you're doing what you're doing and why you're focused on doing it. But, but you know, I, what I want you to understand is if you allow yourself a sweet snack every day around 9, I mean, th that's a habit, right? It's not because you're hungry. It, it's a habit. And so your habit is, is, it, is that habit fueling your dreams or, or is it working towards your goals or is it working against your goals? So what I want you to do is build healthy habits that work towards your goals and recognize bad habits that may be working against your goals. And so now you've identified that you have a snack every day around 9. We've identified that that is a habit. You get to make the decision if that's a good habit that fuels your dreams or a bad habit that works against them. Only you can make that decision. So I'm just helping you identify that it's a habit and it's not that you're hungry. So... Um, so Ellen says, uh, for her, seven worthwhile points for you. So, so that, you know, I certainly understand it. And again, it's the same conversation. I'm not going to tell you what's right or wrong. I, I tell you that for me, I'd rather have seven points of dinner. Um, you know, I can get a lot of food of real food for seven points that I'm not, I'm not going to waste on dessert. So uh, there will be sometimes I will. But as a daily habit, I'm not. As a daily habit, I'm going to get more food and fuel my, my work towards my goals. And then on occasion, for cert, uh, certain, I'm going to work it in. Um, yeah, so Angie said, you know, or talking to Christine, said you have a stay away from Dairy Queen is too much of a temptation. So every once in a while, you know, I'll absolutely, we go to Dairy Queen. Um, you know, and, and I, I actually end up getting the 38-point blizzard because I want it. Um, but I can't do it every night, you know, as much as I would love to. I just can't. Um, let's see. Yeah, Fat Dag reruns. Woohoo! You know what I should actually? What I should do is I should go share some of the old videos on Facebook, um, for sure. Yeah. So Ladonna's not willing to give up wing night yet. So I understand. Um, you always do some extreme low point meals to accommodate the points needed for our favorite wings. Also trying to alternate my meal every other week to hit the Cajun chicken soup instead of wings every week. So, yep. So, uh, you know, I, I referred to it in one of the previous shows as keeping your bad habits on life support. So, you know, if, if, if we're continuing to do the same things, um, you know, in, and we have that mindset of, I can't give it up, you know, just know that. Um, you know, if you can't give it up at some point, it's still controlling you and you want to have control over it. So, 
Uh, Anne, thank you for that. Anne says you always get something even when you're listening to a repeat. I agree with that too. Brian, I agree. Uh, is May- I haven't seen Megan around in a while. I hope she's still doing well. So, oops. Um, yeah, Charlotte works out of her car. So, yeah, so recordings are, yep, very, very good. Um, let's see. Ha. <laughs> Jennifer was like, the other day she was driving and you're actually happy that traffic was stopped because you get to listen to the, I've done that before too. Some of the podcasts I listen to, it's funny, like I'll be driving and you're right. Uh, I pull into the parking lot. I'm like, I'm not ready to stop yet. So very fun. Uh, Dorothy, thank you for being here. You're awesome too. Woohoo. We're awesome together. Everyone in here is awesome. Um, I don't do steam wings, so I don't know. When I have wings, I have real wings. I do. I just don't have them that often. Um, Tammy, you're welcome. Um, Linda, good night. Um, let's see. Yeah, Christy, that isn't that right? Right. So we find, uh, you know, if you eat Halo Top. Uh, because it's low points, and then you find you were eating it every day. But when you before you started the journey, you weren't eating it every day. So you've been, you've found a new bad habit. Um, and it again, it's not the ice cream's fault; it's the habit's fault. So, um, so Ellen, Ellen says it's a habit to go to my meeting every week and tracking. Yes, that's a. So again, we what I want you to do is identify the habits that you're doing. And some habits are are leading you down the path to follow and to complete and to fulfill your goals. Some habits will lead you away from your goals. So all I'm asking you to do is identify what are habits and what are not habits. And if it's a habit, then identify, is, is it something that I want to continue doing? For me, going to the gym, going for a run, those are good habits. You know, going to my meeting, those are all good habits. You know, or is it a bad habit? So... Or, you know, I don't know that it's somewhere it can be in between. That's, you know, again, it's going to be different for everybody. I remember, Jeff, when you wrote that, Jeff said here the bad, uh, the big habit he used to have was he would go into the gas station every night and get a bunch of sugary items to consume. Um, he no longer does that, and it's different. So, Jeff, I'm the same thing. I, I have a habit. One of my habits now is when I stop at a gas station, I go in and get a water. And, or, you know, if I, even at the grocery store, I find water. And so at least I've made a habit of doing that, and at least that's a habit that works towards my goals. But before, just like you, if I stopped at a gas station, it was an automatic soda and a candy bar every single time I stopped for gas, just because I could. So I had to replace that habit with, well, I, you know, the habit says I stop for gas and I go in, so I still do that. But what I've done now is I replace that with water and either a piece of fruit or, you know, at least a Quest bar is a little more, more better. So, um, let's see. Yeah, so we, I think we all agree that gas stations are evil. Um, Lynn says, tonight is your last night with soda. Mark your words. Let's, uh, okay, Lynn, we're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to write Lynn in the book of awesome for that. Lynn, so, um, I'm going to write it just as it says in Facebook. So we know. Nothing like telling a few thousand people. Kaylin says, Ten, uh, Tonight is my last night with soda. Mark my words. 10-1-2017. There you go. Your words have been marked. Done. And that's how you do it. And you know how you stop doing, you know, you just never order it again and you never buy it again. That's it. It's that simple. Kind of. 
Uh, so, Brian, you're at Megan's house. Cool. Oh, very fun. Very fun. We'll tell the whole family I said hello. Jeff, 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 Jeff. Jeff and I have a lot in common. Jeff was a board eater for sure. Uh, Ellen says, no soda for you in 10 years. So for me, it's been three. January will be three years for me, no soda. Um, Jennifer, thank you. Ah, Denise says, husband is on fire with his meal prepping. Very good. Uh, Debbie, good night. Kat says, the best wings are on Kelly's Island and they're grilled. Uh, fun. Yeah, I don't miss I don't miss any soda at all at all. You know, it's been almost three years. Don't miss it at all. Um, yeah, Donna, Mike, up up here, these gas stations, I've, I can get an apple and a banana almost every gas station I stop, and a lot of them have like watermelon and strawberry cups and uh, pineapple and blueberries. So. You know, and that's, you know, that's an episode we talked about early on um, in the teens. I bet it's talking about go vote. You know, if you if you see the episode that says go vote, it's talking about going to vote for bananas. And so part of the reason I buy fruit at, at all the gas stations is mostly to send the message to the guy who reorders fruit that the fruit sells. So he continues to buy more fruit. So I'm voting with my wallet to bring in more fruit. Uh, Ellen's asking about a Quest bar. It's a protein bar made by a company called Quest. Uh, a lot of gas stations up here have them. They're four points, lots of protein, so I do that on occasion. Um, yeah. So, Lynn, you know, it's no pressure. It's only only told, you know, a few thousand people. Um Jeff, I agree. And Jeff, isn't it fun too? So Jeff says getting grapes at the gas station is now fun. What I love, um, my favorite thing about buying fruit at the gas station is I walk up at the front of the register and I put the fruit up there or whatever, and they almost always ask me, they point to like the peanut butter cups or the Snickers, they go, would you like a Snickers? And I'm like, I'm buying a banana from a gas station. What, what makes you think I want a Snickers? I don't say that, of course. I'm very nice to them. But... Um, by just laughing, you know, it's, um, you're just not used to seeing that, you know, cause I, and I'm certainly not judging by any stretch cause I was there, but I will, I look at what people are holding in the line and, you know, and, and a lot of them are, you know, it's early in the morning or late in the afternoon. And, and so I'll see people in line with, you know, a bag of chips and a thing of ding dongs and yo hos and, you know, a soda. And I'm like, man, that was me, you know, and, and I'm standing there proudly holding a banana or an apple and I'm kind of hoping they see it and hoping that they go, I won't say anything to them, you know, but um, but I'm hoping they go. Wow, that that guy's in shape, and he's ordering a banana. Hmm. I wonder if there's any correlation. So. Um. No, I yeah, I know you can pay at the pump. I yeah, that's a whole different conversation, right? But for sure. Yep. Uh, Laura, thank you. Um. So Ladonna switched to unsweet or sweet. I don't know that sweet tea is much better for us than soda. I've never done the research, but I just I have to make the assumption that all the sugar in a sweet tea is just as bad as a regular soda. Um, yeah, Anne stopped at a Garth Brooks concert. Way to go. I like Garth. Um, the first thing you see is fruit cups. Isn't that awesome? Um Oh, so Lisa says, making Lifetime again. Took you four years to get back. Love your podcast. So thank you so much. Congratulations on getting back to Lifetime. Feels good, doesn't it? Very nice. Um, wow. Um, Gina says she quit soda 36 years ago. That's amazing. That's such inspiration. Um, Keith is down, uh, 60 pounds by not drinking soda and some other amazing stuff. Yep. So Steve, same way. Hey, Steve, how are you, sir? Um, so for me, it's only been three years. It's funny. It'll be 13 at some point. Um, let's see. I think we're coming up on the bottom here, but, um, let's see. So as I'm scrolling down to the bottom, uh, I'll add one or two folks to the Book of Awesome. So let me know what you got. And when I get to them, we'll kind of wrap this up. 
uh, and we'll get the um, we'll get episode one twenty four up and to the to the servers. Get that going. Um, see me Wednesday. I don't know that you'll see me Wednesday. I think again, it's either going to be tomorrow night and maybe Tuesday, and then it won't be until the following week, just based on my schedule. So, and then after that, we're back to daily. So once a week from today, we'll probably be back into a daily routine. Um, so you can almost count it, but it's just going to take me the next week to get through this, the event we got going on. Um, Alan, next live show, if it's not tomorrow night, it'll be a week from now. Unless I can find some random time to pop in, but um, we'll see. Uh, for those, you know, again, Alan, the other thing too is I do is I do, uh, you know, Facebook will notify you when I go live. I try, I didn't, I, I think I try and put it on Twitter if I'm going to go live. Um, but for the folks who are patrons on the Patreon site, go to fatdag.com, click on listen now. Um, you know, the, the text messaging service I use charges me per text message. So I turn around and charge you for the text message. So if you want text messages, you can sign up for them. And if you pay for them, I will text you before I go live. And so I about 50 folks or so get that text message. So, um, yeah, Jeff, Garth Brooks is going to be here October. It's this weekend, but I'm so busy. I won't even, you know, I had a chance to get tickets and I just, um, I just got too much going on, but I would love to go see Garth even way back in the day. Um, Jennifer, 28 blue dots in September. That's amazing work. Denise, under 200 pounds this week. So let's get both those written down. I like both of those. Uh, even though Denise's is kind of a, it's a scale victory, but this is the book of awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Mm. In September. So Jennifer says you got 28 blue dots in September. Uh, Denise follows that up with... I'm under 200 pounds this week. Very nice. Congratulations, Denise, on that. Someone wrote in, I can't remember, was it you, Denise, you, Denise that um, I refer to folks that when they get under 200 and back into Wonderland, I refer to them as Alice. And somebody wrote in and said, don't call me Alice. So if that's you, I'm sorry. Uh, if not, welcome to Wonderland, Alice. And you ran 13 miles. That's incredible. Ooh, incredible. Yeah, Charlotte says you love the Facebook group. Yep, so for those of you still hanging out, uh, wisewingmen.com will get you to the Facebook group for now until I redirect it somewhere else. Oh, man. i got to figure out what's going on with my lights. Um, they're on a timer, and so I don't know why um, they go out automatically. Yep, Charlotte, I saw that, um, and it's it's coming. You know, if you know, if you email me, it takes almost almost two months now from an email to get to the show. So, what's cool about that is if you email in uh, for the next two months, you have to be really, really, really good because you don't want me to read your email on the air and you saying, "Oh yeah, I don't do that anymore." So, um, Eva had my activity of seventy six minutes last week. That's incredible. Um, so yes, yeah, so we wrote down Eva had activity of 76 minutes last week. Great work. Great, great, great work. Um... I love the Book of Awesome, too. 
Yep, Charlotte, here we go. I'll show it to you, Charlotte. Right here. Lee and Charlotte met uh, in the Wise Advice show feed, uh, and they met in real life. Accountability and then better together are the hashtags. So, kind of sloppy handwriting. I have to rewrite it. This is a met. So, it's cool. Yep, so you're definitely in the book of awesome. Book of awesome. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm a lefty. Um, why oops up? Isn't that a fun word? I wonder if, you know, I wonder if like, cause, you know, remember back in the day when someone was probably, I mean, you probably don't remember because I don't remember, but think of like when they come up with the word Google, right? Someone's probably like, Google? What the heck is that? And now you just say it's Google. So how cool would it be if like, you know, a million years from now, someone's saying, why oops up? And it's just like a household name, household term, why oops up? Why oops up? And then someone goes, oh, I wish you could focus. That's funny. Um, very, very, very fun. So, cool. All right, looks like we made it all the way back to the bottom. Jennifer, you're in the Book of Awesome. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Ellen says, uh, Ellen is talking to Shane. Says, I'm going to, I'm going five pounds below my lifetime, but still don't have the stopping feeling. Yeah, so that's it. So you go until you, you no longer want to lose any weight. That's the goal. So, yeah, I agree. Charlotte, I'm weird. Like, I play sports right handed and I do, I write and eat left handed. It's weird. Why oops up? You know, the other reason I like why oops up so much is because I see a lot of people say to me, um, when you're at a point, stop eating, and they leave off the last P, and it's not stop eating. It's stop eating points. You can still have zero point foods, salads, and, you know, uh, fruit and veg or some vegetables. So why oops up reminds you uh, exactly what the words were. Uh, Pastor Kim, why oops up is, it's an acronym so it's, you know, when you're out of points, stop eating points. And so hashtag why oops up. And then when someone uses the hashtag, you follow it up with, I wish you good focus. So it's kind of like sneezing, right? So why oops up? So, you know, as someone, you see someone reaching for something, you say, why oops up? And then they go, ah, I wish you good focus. Or, or if they say it to themselves, you can follow it up with, I wish you good focus. So cool. Well, on that, let's go ahead and wrap episode 124 up. The Book of Awesome is getting wrapped back up. Um, let's get that done. You know, it's funny. When I bought this, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, and I'm so glad I bought it. It's, it's a really, really, really cool journal. So, very, very fun. All right, well, thank you for being here. Uh, as you know... Um, uh, you know, maybe tomorrow night we'll be back. Uh, if not, it'll be about a week. And I apologize for that. Uh, we're gonna raise a ton of money for charity. Uh, the Folds of Honor Foundation over my left shoulder, that's the little flag there. Uh, the Folds of Honor Foundation, we provide scholarships to children and spouses who've lost someone on the battlefield. And so this fundraiser we're doing this week is to raise money for that. This year alone, we gave away $13 million in scholarships. So it's a, it's really good work. So I appreciate your patience as we work through that. Um, we'll get that, you know, get all the fundraising stuff done and then things will be back to normal and we'll be back into a daily rhythm and a daily routine. But in the meantime, you've got this. You have plenty of episodes to dig through. There's plenty of support. Let's go get it done. Uh, I believe in you. I know you can do this. Um, continue to do all of the amazing things that you're doing. You're doing it. Um, you're doing it with, with focus. And so keep up that great focus. Go get it done. Uh, the journey has nothing to do with luck. You know that. So I wish you a good focus. Have a great night.